Well, welcome everyone to Open Arms Community Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Would you take a moment to just greet a few people that are beside you? Welcome to Open Arms. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service. Praise the Lord. God is good. Welcome everyone to Open Arms Community Church. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service. Merry Christmas to each one of you. Uh, you received a program as you came in. And uh, I just want to encourage you to open up that program. For those of you that are first time guests to Open Arms, on the back of that program you will find a, a statement of our purpose, mission, vision, and values. I want to encourage you to familiarize yourself with those and you'll get a quick introduction to who we are as a church, what we're about, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm Mike McAvoy, the pastor here at Open Arms. Uh, we're excited that you're here. Inside of your program, uh, you're going to notice several inserts. The first one I want to draw your attention to is the connection card. If you would take a moment to pull that connection card out, we would love to uh, hear from you that you are here. So if you want to write down your name, let us know that you made it, regular attenders. Those of you that are first time guests here, we want to thank you for joining us today. So if you'll fill out that card as completely as you feel comfortable in doing, we'd love to send you a thank you for joining us here tonight. On the uh, other sheet, you'll notice a yellow insert, which is our feedback form. And if you'll take a moment to share with us your experience here throughout the night, let us know of things that we can improve upon, things that went really well, that you uh, appreciated and that touched you. We would love to hear from you. And also any prayer requests that you may have, if you write those down, we'd be glad to be praying for you throughout the week and throughout the season. So, uh, you'll notice an insert of an upcoming series that we're going to be doing. And in fact, you'll notice on the right-hand column of your, um, of your program is a list of upcoming series really throughout the year. So that gives you a quick heads up on where we believe God's calling us to go as a church, okay, in the coming year. So we're really excited that you're here. Uh, we trust that God is going to meet you and bless you during your pro this program and our time together here tonight. And at this time, we want to focus your attention to the screen for a quick little video, and then our children are going to start the program. six years old, and uh, I was performing in our Christmas pageant at church, I had one line in one song, it was the song, Do You Hear What I Hear?, and I messed it up. I sang, a child, a child, sleeping in the night, with a tail as big as a pie. That's not the way that song goes, ladies and gentlemen. People get mad when you sing about baby Jesus with a tail. Do you hear what I hear? It's Psycho. Who wrote that? Said the little lamb to the shepherd boy. I think the shepherd boy's been in the field a little too long, don't you? <laughs> Talking to the sheep. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh. We gotta go, go Mighty King. It's 
words that go to the mighty king. <laughs> a child, a child, shivers in the cold. Let us bring him silver and gold. How about a blanket? How about some soup? Child shivering in the cold! Throw some gold on him, he'll be fine. <laughs> he's got pneumonia, but he's loaded. Am I not supposed to see the joy buzzer on your finger? Just trying to cheer you up. Spencer, how would shockingly cheer me up? It's called a joy buzzer. Why are you so needy anyway? Maybe I'm just mad that Mom made me take you with me. No, no you're not a big sister grumpy. Your life says she's grumpy. Maybe it's just, I really don't get what Christmas is supposed to be about, you know? What? what? Christmas is the happiest time of the year. Yeah, yeah but I just don't get it, so it's not very happy. That's the opposite of what you should do. Now. Go terrorize the arcade or something. Oh, hey, Allison. Sam, hi, how are you? Are you good? You look good. Okay, nice seeing you. Whoa, what's your hurry? Sorry, my schedule allows for conversations lasting no longer than 12 seconds. Yeah, that's not insane or anything. You don't understand, Sam. It's Christmas. There's so much to do. There are parties to get ready for, Christmas cards to mail out, youth group gifts to buy for the parties, gifts to buy for the youth group, since I say our gifts, but I'm actually buying them for myself, and organizing a black tie Christmas banquet for my business associates. We are serving lamb. You have business associates? Yep. You're 10. I'm a go-getter, Sam. Clearly. Do you have time to relax or sleep or blink? I mean, does all this stuff really make you happy? I mean, I guess this is what Christmas is about. It's about being busy. Oh, I've used a lot of my conversation time for today. I guess I don't have to talk to my parents tonight. I'll let you go. I have to go find Spencer anyway. That's great, because I have to meet the butcher and approve the lamb wrap for the banquet. Nice seeing you, Sam. Merry Christmas. Yeah, you too.
buy some coffee in his house. We're going to fight for an hour. We're going at it. Honey, I read, dogs and puppies are terrible with children. Because you're terrible with children. <laughs> that may be true, honey, but daddy don't pee on the car. <laughs> Just that one time. That's, that's before I knew Jesus, so that don't count at all. <laughs> Hi, have you seen my brother around? I don't really know what he looks like, so I don't know. Well, have you seen the explosions go off around here? No. Spencer, Spencer hasn't been, been here then. Looks, looks like you're a little late, Chris. Spencer. They're closed. I know. I'm waiting here until they open tomorrow. I want to be the first one in line to get the new Hexphone 9. What's wrong with your Hexphone 8? Nothing, except that it's tiny. The Hex 9 is twice as big and twice as thick for maximum data storage. Can a phone still be called a phone if it's a phone book? What's a phone book? Never mind. Anyway, why don't you just put it in your Christmas list? I'm sure your parents will be happy to get it for you. Who do you think gave me the money to buy it? Wouldn't you want to wait and like make it a special moment? Sam, are we five? Christmas is about the stuff and doing whatever it takes to get it. Spencer, what are you doing? Why are all these kids following you? These aren't kids, Sam. This is my army, and we're on a mission. What are you talking about? What is our mission? Spencer! And how are we going to do it? <laughs> was terrifying. Yeah, I'm going to go take care of that. Good idea. See you, Sam. Merry Christmas. Yeah, you too. I wonder what it was like to really be, to be born in a manger. I know, right? I wonder what ever happened to baby Jesus. When he grew up? Wait, you're telling me that the baby Jesus from the Christmas story is the same baby Jesus as the adult walk on water Jesus? I really put those two concepts together. Wow. Well, I wonder what ever happened to that guy. He went to the cross. That's the same guy? Yeah. Baby Jesus is the same as cross Jesus. Yeah. I mean, he grew up. I mean, there's some time in there. You know, he grew up. He, uh, he taught people, he lived a perfect life, he, uh, he died on the cross, he came back to life, you know? Now he lives in our hearts. That's the same guy? The Jesus that lives in our hearts? Yeah. <laughs> this is really, okay. I guess I just didn't put two and two together. This is, whew. <laughs> wow. Merry Christmas, Denver. I guess we should just try to view Christmas instead of one isolated event and more of an ongoing story about our salvation. Yeah, it's a great idea. Great. in so much trouble. It's not my fault Mall Security can't take a joke. Using a bunch of kids to start a riot isn't a joke. I was just trying to cheer you and everybody else up. You have a weird definition of the word cheer. Hello there. I'm sorry, sir. I don't have any extra money to give you. I'm not looking for money. I'm a hobo. 
I give up luxuries like money and a house to live a life of freedom on the rails. You can call me Steve. Steve? No, not Steve. No V. Just E. Stay. Well, it's nice to meet you, Steve, but I have to take my terrorist brother home before mall management calls police. Uh, hold on, just a second. I overheard you saying that you needed cheered up. What's got you down? This really doesn't make any sense because you're a complete stranger and could be literally insane, but I feel like I want to tell you all of my problems. I get that a lot. Christmas. Christmas is what's got me down. What? How do you figure? Christmas is the happiest time of year. I guess it would be if I actually knew what it was supposed to be about. That's the easiest question I've ever been asked to answer. It wasn't really a question. It's about Jesus! <laughs> God sent his son to earth to sacrifice himself so that we could live forever in heaven. That sounds like a good enough reason to celebrate to me. Yeah, you know what, Steve? I think you're right. Thank you. No problem. High five. Ow! What was that? You got joy buzzed. Yes, my brain worked. This was your plan? Start a riot with kids so we'd get kicked out of the mall, who then we would talk to a wise old hobo who would then joy buzz me? That is impressively complicated. How'd he get you to do this? He gave me five bucks. But you're a hobo. I thought you gave up luxuries like that for freedom on the rails. Well, here's the thing. There's a new sandwich place downtown with a dynamite turkey club, and they don't accept freedom as payment. Or credit cards. See you later. Turkey club. <laughs> so you did all of this to cheer me up? Yep. Thank you, Spencer. Also, I broke your iPod and I figured it would be better to tell you when you were in a good mood. <laughs> I'll process that later. Let's just be thankful that you're not in jail right now. Merry Christmas, Sam. Merry Christmas. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. The glory of the Lord shall round about them. And they were sore afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you who is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. He shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, who will burn in. That's a Christmas song, I'll try it on. Praise the Lord. We want to, again, welcome you to Open Arms Community Church. At this time, we'd like to just take a moment to reflect upon the reason for the season, the meaning of it all, what's the point, as we consider what it is that we actually celebrate. We're not celebrating Black Friday. We're not celebrating the new PlayStation or the new uh, latest iPhone 6 that's come out. We're celebrating that God, the creator of the universe entered our finite world in flesh and blood and for what? This Christmas season, we've been doing a series called A Kiss Christmas. And while it's a Christmas series in package, 
it really is addressing the key and fundamental issues of our faith and recognizing that we have turned Christian faith into something that it was never meant to be, a religion. And when our faith becomes a religion, we become political about it. Political, whether we attribute it to a certain political group within our country, but really I'm talking about politics of the heart. I'm talking about the fact that when we approach God with a religious viewpoint, we become legalists where we are looking for reasons, excuses, and loopholes of how to get out of doing things the way that God has said to do them. When I talk about religion, I'm talking about a rule and ritual based approach to God. And friends, if you and I consider the words of Jesus of why it is that he, in fact, came and entered our world, it really takes that paradigm of thought, that approach to God and that perception of who God is and how he operates, and it flips it upside down because all of a sudden we realize that Jesus didn't come to establish another religion. He did not come to give us more rules and rituals to follow. Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And anyone who believes in him will not be condemned, but anyone who does not believe is condemned already. One of the most famous portions of scripture in the history of the world, in all of the Bible, John 3, 16. Friends, if you and I take to heart what Jesus said, he did not say that he came to establish a religion full of rules and rituals, but rather he came to establish or reestablish a relationship between creator God and the people that he created to be a part of his family. For God so loved the world. So in this series... A KISS Christmas, and KISS stands for Keep It Simple Stupid, and yes, we used the S word. We recognize that we have turned Christian faith into something that it was never meant to be. And and, and in the process, we have robbed ourselves of the depth of all that God created us for, to experience in this world and the next in a relationship with him and in the process as we have turned Christian faith into nothing but rules and rituals we have dulled our heart so that when we break the rules when we do things differently than how God says to we think we're just breaking a rule When in fact, what we're breaking is the heart of the one who loves us the most. See, Jesus said, God so loved the world. And I don't know about you, but I find that, and I did when I was not a Christian, and even now as a Christian, I find that a a, just a, a crazy and insane idea that God, who is perfect in every way, would love me that he would love you i mean we know people right we know ourselves we've given god every reason not to love us and here's the crazy part he knows it he knows everything about you 
He knows everything you've ever done and everything that's been done to you. He knows every skeleton hidden in your closet. He knows every issue about you that you tried to sweep under the rug because it's too embarrassing and too shameful to bring out into public and let people see the real you. Let me tell you something. There is nothing hidden from God. He sees every detail of your life, past, present, and future, every hidden thing, every real revealed thing. He sees it. He knows you inside and out better than you know yourself and he loves you and not only does he love you God so loved the world but he pursued you he sent his son God came in the flesh as Jesus Christ can you imagine that God Almighty becoming flesh and blood experiencing the limitations of humanity feeling hungry Being cold and naked, being hated upon and rejected, even by his own family. All the while, while facing the same temptations that you and I face on a daily basis, he came on a mission to do it right. And he did. And living a perfect life, doing for us what we could not do for ourselves, God proved His love in an epic way by ultimately laying down His perfect life as a sacrifice to take upon Himself the punishment that you and I have deserved all along by every wrong thing that we've ever thought, said, or done. The Bible says that God so loved the world that He sent His one and only Son. God not only loves us, but He wants us, and He proved it by pursuing us and providing an opportunity for you and for me to have a relationship with Him, a love relationship that you and I could never earn, never deserve, and we could never do anything to change that. So... His principle number one was that God loved us. No matter who you are, where you've been, or what you've done, you've got to know that no matter what impression, what idea, philosophy, or what kind of vibe you ever got from another religious person, from a church, from a preacher, from someone who calls himself a Christian, if you walked away feeling like there was no hope, no, that, that you were just condemned, And that there's no way God could forgive you or want you. I don't care what you've done. Maybe you've lied, stolen, killed. Maybe you're straight. Maybe you're gay. Maybe you're black. Maybe you're white. Whoever you are, wherever you've been, Jesus loves you. And he wants you. Can you believe that tonight? As you enter into this Christmas season and you celebrate some babe being born in a manger... 2,000 years ago. What relevance does it have in your life today? The answer is that you are deeply, powerfully, ferociously, and furiously loved by God, the creator of it all. And he wants you. So what do we do with that? How do we respond? See, what we want to do is we want to say, okay, God, thank you. I believe in you. So now I'm going to do something to earn your love and to earn your blessing and to earn your forgiveness. And again, we missed it. You're already loved. You're already forgiven. You want to know what we do with this kind of love? We respond to it in like manner. That as God has fully and completely loved me and given everything for me, I'm going to fully and completely love Him back and give everything back. My time, my money, my talent, my family, my friends, my work, my very life, every breath that I breathe, 
when I shower in the morning, when I eat my breakfast, that's why we say a prayer. Because all of a sudden, every aspect of my life, how I parent my children, how I relate with my spouse, how I engage that person that I call friend, or even those folks that I call enemy, every aspect of my life becomes a demonstration of love towards God. And we call that worship. It's not songs that we sing. It's not prayers that we pray. It's a life that we live. And that, friends, is what Jesus called the great commandment. That you love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Friends, that's called a relationship. Loving God, not serving Him, not sacrificing, not worshiping. See, if you love God, you will serve Him. You will sacrifice for Him, and you will worship Him. And with the right attitude, instead of I have to do it, someone's twisting my arm and you're begrudging, now it's I want to. God is awesome and He has loved me in a way that I could have never earned or deserved. And now I am just so freaking excited that I'm going to give my all for Him. And you want to know what that looks like? Well, it's to overflow. The love that God has for you and that you are sending back to God is supposed to overflow out of you toward the people around you. Jesus said in that great commandment, not only are you to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength, but you are to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Friends, when love rules, everyone wins. And if you and I would learn what the simple truths of our Christian faith really are, which is that God loved us and He wants us to love Him back and He wants us to live a life of love towards those around us. Our world, our workplace, our homes, our neighborhood, our community, our nation would be a better place. Our lives would be radically different. But I need us to understand something as we wrap up our time together. And that is that this love, it hurts. It hurts because we love enough to do the hard things, right? Jesus said to do certain things. And he also said not to do certain things. And so because we love, we want to cooperate with him. We we call that obedience. And it's not a have to, it's a a want to. But it sometimes hurts because it means that we have to deny ourselves. We have to say no to something we really want to do. Something that would make us cool with our friends. Something that would cause us to, to be popular among our peers. But you know, because God is all-knowing and He loves us, we need to learn to trust that when He says, do this, no matter how hard it is, it's in our best interest. And when He says, don't do this, no matter how fun or pleasurable it looks, no matter what it will seem to, to cause you to gain, In the end, you will lose. It will cause brokenness and pain. And we need to learn to trust that our Heavenly Father knows what we do not. And He knows best. And He has our best in mind every time. But there is another side of this love hurts. And that is that when you know the truth and you really care about people the way that Jesus says to All of the sudden, life changes for you. And now all of a sudden, you realize just how many of your family and your friends are running in the rat race that they will never win. And that is ultimately in vain. All of a sudden, you realize that your friends and your parents and your, and your, your brother and your sister and maybe your spouse or your children, people that you love so deeply, they're chasing all the wrong things. And there is a heaven to gain and there is a hell to avoid. And, and Jesus said He was that way. And all of a sudden, you ache 
You just ache that they would know this love that you've come to know. And it hurts you so badly that people that you care about would choose to take it lightly or all out reject it and choose to live a life that in the end just continues to perpetuate more pain and more brokenness. And all you can do is weep and pray for them. Love does hurt, but here's the deal. If you don't cry over them, if you don't hurt down in here over the fact that your kid or your parent or your aunt or uncle or your neighbor or your best friend or your football buddy or your college roommate, if you don't hurt that they don't know Christ, that their eternity is not guaranteed with you and with the Lord forever and ever and ever, like Jesus said, then guess what? Something's wrong in here. Just the other night, I went to see The Hobbit Part 3. And in it, these two characters are in this situation where a loved one dies. And this one character cries out and says, why does it hurt so bad? And the other character replies and says, because it was real. Friends, if it's real, you'll feel it. I can tell you there is not a day that goes by that I don't pray for my wife or my children, that they would not only know about Jesus, but know Jesus and love Jesus, not just believe in Him, but love Him as He loves them. And that it would just grip their heart in such a way that, that it would change their life forever. And that they would never want to let go. Is, is God's love that real to you tonight? Is God's love that overwhelming? Has it taken a grip not only in your heart, but in your mind and in your lifestyle? Is Jesus your first love tonight? And in being your first love, is He the head of your home, the head of your life? Is He Lord? Maybe tonight, for the very first time, something about this whole Jesus thing is making sense. And you sense God stirring in your heart in a way that you have never experienced before. And tonight, maybe you feel like you just really want to respond to God's love. You want to say, yes, Lord, I want to love you back. And I want to live my life in a way that is molded and shaped by that love of God. I want to live a life that shows that I love Jesus back. And if that's you, then just as a man and a woman would step up onto this platform in a wedding ceremony and speak their vows to one another and pledge their lives to one another, we're going to say a simple prayer to close our time together here. To make our own vows, our own promises of commitment and devotion to the Lord. He sealed His in blood. We will seal ours with an amen and then a life that is lived to prove our love for Jesus every day with every breath. So let's close our eyes. I want to invite you, if the Lord is stirring in your heart to make a commitment to Jesus for the very first time to pray a simple prayer with our church family. And as we're about to pray, I do want to also address one other group with our eyes closed. Some of us here, we are a people who believe in Jesus, but our hearts have drifted far from Him. We believe in all the right things, and yet... We do not love the Lord as we used to. We have forsaken our first love. 
We have cheated on him. We have stepped out on him. And tonight, some of us are sensing God stirring in our hearts to renew our vows to the Lord, to recommit our life to living a life of love towards God and toward our fellow man. And if that's you, I want to invite you to say this same prayer of commitment to the Lord with the rest of our church family. Say this prayer tonight. Say, Father God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for wanting me. Thank you for pursuing me. Thank you for sending Jesus. You know every secret, every skeleton in my closet, every hidden thing that's too shameful to discuss. I confess it all to you. Every wrong thing I've done, I give to you everything that's been done to me. I ask you to forgive me for all my wrongs. And I forgive those who have wronged me. And I commit myself to this Jesus who loves me. Take my life. And bring glory to your name. Help me to prove my love by the life that I live. Help me to never stray, never fall away, never divorce you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Would will you applaud those who made a commitment tonight? Amen. So listen. In your program was a card that had a little box that says, my decision today, uh, on the back of it. And if you made a commitment to the Lord for the first time or as a recommitment, we would love to hear from you so that we can come along the side of you and assist you in your journey of following Jesus. At this time, we're going to receive a special Christmas offering, so let me tell you about it real quick. This offering that we receive tonight, every penny of it is going to go toward Destinations, which is a local charity, a Christian ministry that ministers to those who are in need. And they, are, they work with the churches and other nonprofit organizations to uh, establish a network of support and accountability to help those that are truly in need and to hold those accountable that are just trying to use and manipulate the system. And uh, this, this is a ministry that was birthed out of uh, Open Arms and a couple other churches, uh, members of the churches that came together and, and made this happen. And so uh, we've had the privilege of working with them for years now. They do a wonderful job. And so our Christmas offering is going to be going to them. We do this every year. And we want to encourage you to give generously to help support that ministry, okay? So at this time, let me just pray a word of blessing over you as you give. And then as the offering bags go by, you can stick your gift in there. You can also stick your feedback form and your connection card. And then we're going to close uh, with our traditional candlelight uh, ceremony. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the many ways that you have so richly blessed our lives. And this season where we celebrate you giving to us your very life, we want to give back. We want to bless your work in our community and specifically bless destinations. We pray, Father, that you'll bless every person as they give. We pray that you'll just bless their lives richly, cause them to be made rich every way, that they may abound in every good work, and that, Father, they may be generous on every occasion. We do pray you'll multiply the use of every penny given that destinations would be able to advance your kingdom and share your love with those who are in need. We pray your blessings upon our evening as people go home, and we pray that you'll be glorified in this place, in our hearts, and in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you give, and God bless you through this music video.
sing happy birthday with us to the Lord. Happy birthday to you.
handled. As you dismiss, there will be a box, a basket in the back that you can put your candle in. We want to wish you all a Merry Christmas. There will be cake downstairs for those of you that would like to uh, spend some time visiting and having some cake. Otherwise, Merry Christmas. We want to invite you Sunday at 9.15 and 11 o'clock our services. We invite you to come and join us for part four of A Kiss Christmas. Have a Merry Christmas. God bless you. Oh, and one oh, more one thing. More thing. Next, Next week, week, in light, in of, light the, of the uh, uh, New Year's Eve first, first night, night being canceled, canceled. Open, Arms Open Arms is hosting a New Year's Eve Eve's 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 bash for the, for the community. So come on so out. There will be live entertainment and a uh, live dropping of the ball on the big screen. We look forward to celebrating with you. It starts at what time, Justin? 8 o'clock. Come on out. God bless you.